morning, I'm Danielle Delate for The Buzz. Now, it's been 40 plus years since History of the World Part 1 came out by Mel Brooks, and we're finally at the premiere of History of the World Part 2. The black carpet's about to start, so let's check it out. What was this whole experience like working on History of the World Part 2? Such an, a great follow-up to an iconic movie. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, iconic movie. So when I heard about it, uh, I was uh, immediately like, yeah, I want to do anything at all in it. Uh, and then being on set was just amazing, you know, you, you see just from the poster behind me the amount of amazing talent they have in this show. So just to come in and do a, do a guest star on it, play uh, opposite Wanda Sykes was just a really awesome experience. Well, growing up watching uh, History of the World Part 1 as a, as a, uh, a, a, a young man a young, or a teen or a... I forget exactly how old I was, but I was young. Um, we always, me and my friends were always like, when is part two coming out? When is part two coming out? Well, here it is. And I have been given this wonderful uh, 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 gift to be in History of the World Part Two. My God, how cool is that? Um, Mel Brooks was a huge influence on what I thought was, uh, you know, uh, funny. On, on how what comedy was, um, I would deconstruct his movies and the jokes and try to figure out why they were funny, what was good, why they worked, what was you know like, and we would try to recreate that kind of stuff in the sketch groups that I was in, uh, you know, uh, when I was younger, and uh, you know, Mel Brooks is the you know the the, the, the legend. Um, this was pretty crazy. I, I remember Nick calling me. I called me, excuse me, and saying, hey man, we, we're doing this show over at Hulu and we would love for you to come to it. And I was like, sure, man, what is it? And he was like, well, we want you to come play Jesus. We think you have all the virtues to play Jesus. And I was like, I, I don't even know what that means, man. Like, trust me, I don't have the virtues, but I'm happy to come do it. And then I got a script and I cried laughing the first time I read through. And uh, from there, it, the rest of it was just a dream. We got on set, we had a lot of fun, made some people laugh, made some people cry while laughing. And uh, here we are. I just, I don't know how to be cool right now. You know, I'm like a huge just fanboy. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm just like a fanboy that they found on the street showing up here like, wow. You're part of the world now. Oh my God. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your character and what fans can expect. Um, I play one of the real housewives of Kubla Khan, and I don't really know what fans can expect because we kind of just went off script a lot, so we'll see what makes it in. Um, they let us improv, they let us just be riotous, so I don't know, we'll see. What's the experience like on set for you? Oh, it was fun. It was just so much fun. Yeah, probably a pee -pee. So you guys are having a blast even we here. Are. We're just having a blast premiere. We did uh, After Party Season 2, so we're so excited to see each other. Um, but on set, it was just uh, fun. You know, I worked with Ike uh, on uh, After Party. And, you know, in, in life, we just did a bunch of commercials for, like, Hotels.com uh, and the NBA. So Ike and I are, are comedy friends and friends in real life. So to get to, like, do this with him and have him bring me into this, uh, wonderful. About to embark on the biggest campaign in the history of the world, part two. Noah, you were supposed to get two of every animal. I got two chihuahuas, two Pekingeses, two pugs. Actually, I got three pugs. Don't tell God. What is it like being part of the Mel Brooks comedy world now? Really wild. You know, I, I grew up watching, obviously, Young Frankenstein. I also grew up watching Blazing Saddles and, you know, obviously, History of the World, the original. And it was so wild when I got the phone call. Um, and I, I love Nick Kroll. I love this whole group. I love Wanda Sykes. And so when, the second I heard, I was really, you know, flabbergasted. Like, who am I to be a part of such an iconic group of people? And Mel Brooks is an icon, so it's a real honor. Yeah. And this was 40, over 40 years in the making. Yeah, no, it's wild. It's also so fun because obviously, like, we all, you know, as a collective in Hollywood, owe Mel Brooks so much, right? Like. So much of what is being made now is riffing on something that he really kind of like tentpole, you know, started from the ground up. He originated so much of the patterning and the, you know, the comedy delivery and the styling. So I think it's really kind of magical to see how many people wanted to be a part of this. It's like obviously they did, but it's beautiful to see all these people in one place. Like when else does that happen? I mean, he's an icon, so it's so cool to get to be part of this. I, I, I wear a mustache and a wig in this, and I just couldn't be happier. It's like my, my favorite look. Oh, 
wear a mustache and a wig. So what role are you playing here now? I'm playing um, a woman pretending to be a man writing for Shakespeare. <laughs> Period to be part of. Oh yeah, For, I don't think I would want to live that though. No, it seems like it'd be very stinky. With yeah. comedy these days, how far can you push it with working with Mel? You know, he likes to push it the boundaries, but yeah. you know, we have to watch out these days. So how far? Uh, that's a two-part question. The first part, it was fun and awesome, and I was with my friends, and we're doing kind of like dipping our toe into our childhood heroes world, you know, and getting to play with it. Uh, I just had a small part, but just to be there for that small part was just like amazing. And I think that the, I think we're going through like a bit of a uh, educational adjustment. And I think comedy always adjusts to uh, as we evolve, hopefully. Um, I would hate if, if we had this backlash to, you know, to sort of what people see as like the restrictions of comedy because I think the if you have parameters and you have limitations and that pushes you to explore and if, the, if, if there are no rules then things aren't interesting you know it's just it's just a free-for-all and then anybody can say anything and then you run out of material basically star writer and executive producer what was it like working on this and also if you could change one point in history what would that be oh god yeah. You asked a that was a I'm lot. Coming in with a lot for you. That was a lot. We've been given such short a time. Everything was amazing. Uh, just being a part of this project is is I I can't even say it's a dream come true because I I never would have imagined it. I wouldn't even have would have had this dream. Well, at first I didn't know if it was real because I, you know it's been so long since the first one. But um, you know it was Nick Kroll asking, so I was like anything Nick Kroll asks me to do, I'm down to do. So and every I was all my friends are in this movie, so it was amazing. <laughs> Anyone else with a good idea? Hi, I'm Dove Cameron, and you've just been buzzed.